I've been Western Oregon. This is NBC 16 News at 530. He was the protector of his sisters. <laughs> A family is torn apart after two teen siblings were killed in a crash near Brownsville over the weekend. The community is pulling together for support. Good evening and thanks for joining us for NBC 16 at 530. I'm Alan Matthews. Three siblings were driving to meet their mom on Saturday when their vehicle was hit by another driver near Brownsville on Highway 228. Caleb and Shelby Simonis were killed and their sister remains in the ICU. Police say the driver that hit them was intoxicated. NBC 16's Kelsey Christensen and met with Caleb and Shelby's mother today to find out how the family is coping and learn more about who these teens were. These three were a pretty tight-knit group. They took care of animals together, baked together, and that's exactly what they were doing the night of the accident. I guess Kylie had been making cookies. I wasn't there. Kylie had been making cookies, and then they all left to meet me at the clinic, and they all left. They all wanted to go together. They usually always did that kind of stuff together. Their mom, Amy Simonis, says the siblings were on their way to her animal clinic in Brownsville. Their dogs were in a fight and needed some medical attention. But before they got there, tragedy struck. Their mother, one of the first ones on scene. It's okay. 19-year-old Caleb on the right and his 16-year-old sister Shelby on the left didn't survive. 15-year-old Kylie is still in the ICU. Caleb was on track to become a mechanic. His mom says people who knew him knew he was quiet but kind. He was the protector of his sisters, yeah. you know, so um, he loved his sisters. Yeah. He, he, loved his, he loved his Jeep. <laughs> Shelby, well, she was like mom, following in her footsteps to become a veterinarian and heavily involved with 4-H. Well, she had dogs, cats, cows, mules. She she just had this year she decided to um, take a lamb to the fair. Now her, her friends are taking care of her sheep. She loved them. Yeah. She I mean she was the nicest, caringest person you could ever meet. Shelby and Kylie attended Central Lynn High School together. That's where you'll find this rock, painted by Future Farmers of America students as a tribute to the family. Amy says the community has been nothing short of supportive. <laughs> so sorry. There's just one lesson she wants everyone to remember. Don't drink and drive. I mean, it kills people. It, it ruins lives. It ruins families. It ruins, I mean, communities. It ruins them. Reporting in Halsey, I'm Kelsey Christensen. The suspect in the crash, 21-year-old Austin Hillsman, faces several charges, including two counts of manslaughter. He'll be back in court on June the 8th. Nova Health is now offering rapid antigen testing for all urgent care clinics in Oregon. Coronavirus symptomatic and asymptomatic patients that have had contact exposure in Lane, Lynn, and Douglas counties will be able to get tested. Nova Health says the Sophia 2 is the first antigen test authorized by the FDA under its emergency use authorization. It is designed to quickly detect proteins from the virus that causes coronavirus in respiratory specimens, such as nasal swabs. Test results may be provided within 15 minutes. Moving on to coronavirus numbers here in Oregon, the state has surpassed the 4,000 mark in coronavirus cases, but the death toll remains at one or 148 for the third day in a row. Cases remain high in Multnomah, Marion, and Washington counties. There are more than 2,700 cases in those counties. So far, more than 1,400 are still active cases. Here in Lane County, Lane County Public Health reports 67 cases, including one presumptive case. There are only two active cases. Those people are resting at home. That means 63 people have recovered so far. Health officials have reported two suspected deaths since March. In Douglas County, there are a total of 25 cases, but only two are active cases. Everyone else has recovered. Only one person from, person from those two cases is hospitalized. On the coast, Oregon Health Authority reports Coos County has 31 cases. There are three community cases in Coos County, including one presumptive case. Coos County health officials tell us that there are no known hospitalizations right now. Meanwhile, 25 inmates at Shutter Creek have tested positive. Meanwhile, in other parts of our region, OHA is reporting 36 active cases in Lynn County, 25 active cases in Deschutes County. Moving on to Benton County, there are 20 active cases and only three active cases in Lincoln County. Again, these are the latest numbers from OHA. 
Coos County public health officials are anticipating the ramifications from the holiday weekend. They're hoping positive case counts will stay where they are, but say based on statistical probability, they could see a couple of new cases. The question is whether there'll be a spike in the number of cases or only a couple and then flatten out again. I would say that that risk probably went up dramatically over Memorial Day weekend just because the amount of people that were not local and the amount of people that are intermingling and like Eric said, not, um, not utilizing the social distancing. Wearing a mask is still strongly recommended. Leon says when wearing a mask, don't touch your face or move your mask. He says the point of cloth mask is for the protection of others, not yourself. If you were to cough because you had a tickle in your throat, you know, even if you had symptoms, that's what the mask is for to stop that fluid from getting out on, on people directly around you or surfaces that are around you and then having somebody else come along and, and pick it up. Public health officials say when running errands, it's better to take the mask off completely instead of having it hanging from your chin. He recommends you wash your cloth mask every day or at least every few days. For the first time in its more than 30-year history, the holiday lights at Shore Acres State Park has been canceled. NBC 16's Lauren Negretti reports on the latest event affected by the coronavirus and the state of Oregon's health restrictions. So it was out of abundance of caution. David and Shirley Bridgham have run the event since they helped start it in 1987. Now, when months of planning and prep work would normally be taking place, they're canceling the South Coast tradition that would run from Thanksgiving to the New Year. We look at a very dismal projection of how we're going to uh, act as a community with this horrible pandemic. We see traditionally 50 to 60,000 visitors. They come from the local area, from around the nation, and from overseas. Bridgem says it takes about 1,500 volunteers to make it work. There are so many of our volunteers who are in that very vulnerable age group. And there are several choke points in the walkway. While the decision to cancel was difficult, it's supported by the Bay Area's Visitor and Convention Bureau. It has always been uh, the big draw for our area in the winter time. That's typically the off season for tourism. Longline says this cancellation and others for the rest of the year will have an impact, but it's too soon to tell how big it'll be. Travel and tourism is one of the hardest hit industries with this situation. We're still messaging stay home and dream about coming to our area of the beautiful Oregon coast. And when we are able to travel again, we will welcome you with open arms. Bridgem says it was a decision made for the health and safety of everyone involved. Reporting in Coos County, I'm Lauren Negretti. We now turn to our first look at weather. Chief Meteorologist Josh Kozart standing by day two of our warming trend, but we haven't seen the warmer temperatures quite yet, have we? Uh, no, we have not. The warmest of temperatures still right around the corner, but even today across our area, very warm all across western Oregon. Of course, with those clear blue skies overhead, if we can go ahead and maybe take our Max 2 camera uh, here so we can get the weather graphics going. But overall, we're just going to kind of talk about the heat that's going to be building over the next several days days. Fire potentials are also starting to rise up into the moderate levels and that's something that we don't necessarily want to see as the lack of rainfall continues across western Oregon and uh, as far as the temperatures go, some of us could be topping off near 90 degrees. We'll get our weather graphics up and running here for our full forecast. Stay tuned here in just a few minutes. We'll have those details. All right. Thanks a lot, Josh. Well, phase one of reopening in Douglas County started nearly two weeks ago, but there are still some areas adapting to changes to meet certain guidelines, and some events are getting canceled. NBC 16's David Ochoa has a breakdown at how the county is doing. The Phase 1 reopening has been a blessing for many businesses in Douglas County. Even the Roseburg City government is beginning to open up. Now that we are in Phase 1 reopening, uh, we can now hold uh, meetings up to 25 people. So with that being said, we're going to start conducting uh, in-person council meetings and also commission meetings. But Phase 1 has come with a price. Given the, uh, the current social distancing measures, um, the city just decided um, we, we can't, can't continue having movies in the park at this time. This is just the latest Douglas County summer event to be canceled. Also on the list, staples like Graffiti Weekend and the County Fair, which were canceled last week. 
we felt at the city that uh, we didn't want to put folks in a situation where uh, that could increase the risk of a uh, resurgence in the virus uh, with many folks coming together in uh, in one uh, in one space uh, the city decided for safety reasons uh, we needed to cancel movies in the park douglas county has had 23 of its 25 covid cases recover officials don't want to do anything that could put more people at risk Johnson says the city talked about alternatives to canceling, but decided it was the best thing to do. After getting into the nitty gritty details of it, we just decided, you know, from a logistical standpoint, it just makes more sense to just cancel the events. Reporting in Roseburg, I'm David Ochoa. The Coos Bay Farmer's Market will open next week on Wednesday, and it will run every Wednesday through October. The market will open as an essential grocery store. It'll be open from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. with the first hour dedicated to senior citizens and those with underlying health issues. The market won't be like it was in years past. Some of these farm farmers have lost some of their stuff they normally do. They might sell to the schools or to restaurants, and those are either closed or just now starting back open. So this is a way that they can sell. With no social activities, programs, music, and non-essential vendors, the market will be about half the size it's been. Staff, vendors, and volunteers will wear masks and gloves. There will be hand-washing stations throughout the market. Vendors will be at least eight feet apart and are encouraged to sell product pre-packaged or in bundles. A safety greeter will encourage social distancing and shopping with your eyes for a touchless experience. It's recommended that just one person per household visits and takes along a shopping list to speed things up. Advocates for those who are recovering from substance abuse want Oregon's government to help them support those struggling during the pandemic. They say without health, we're looking at, without help rather, we're looking at a possible spike in relapses statewide. NBC 16 Stephanie Rothman is in the studio with more. Stephanie. Alan, when you take a group of people already fighting to stay afloat and yet all that comes with the pandemic, the potential for another health crisis could be just around the corner. I spoke to Oregon Recovers breaking down what their new proposal could mean for former addicts. Most people relax with a glass of wine or a pint of beer, but for those in recovery, that's just not the case. What they need to stay on track is support. We've seen the complete deconstruction of the recovery system in this crisis to then throw alcohol into the mix and make alcohol more available. It's just, it's bad public health policy. That's why Oregon Recovers is working to change that. The nonprofit sent a proposal to the Oregon Health Authority, hoping to help a community where many are struggling. This says alcohol consumption is on the rise. According to Oregon Liquor Control Commission, alcohol sales were up 20% in March, the highest month on record. One of the main goals of the new proposal is to provide more funding and clear guidelines for volunteer-run support groups such as Alcoholics Anonymous. For people to be cut off in different ways from their support and be isolated in their homes on top of how stressful the world is that we're living in right now, it can really be difficult. Doug Smith with Serenity Lane says although many patients are happy with telesupport groups, without face-to-face -face interaction, many could soon be in trouble. They've been doing Zoom 12-step meetings and they're starting to talk about can I go to some of the face-to-face -face ones hopefully here soon and feeling a little safer that certain guidelines are going to be practiced, I think would be helpful with that. If approved, the state would lay out clear guidelines on how to restart. If they don't have criteria, and we as a group of volunteers don't have criteria, it's just going to be a mess in terms of trying to figure out when to, to, like, to come to a limit. Helping those in recovery regain their support network. All right, so it's unclear how long until Oregon recovers gets feedback from the state, but they do hope to have some sort of guidelines to help people out as soon as possible. Alan. All right, thanks a lot, Stephanie. Well, coming up on your only local news at 530, an historic space launch scheduled for today. It's now on hold. The cause for the delay and when it will actually take place. We'll have the latest from a tense Minneapolis where the mayor is joining in the call for an officer to be arrested in the death of a man in his custody. Also, the rush to hire thousands to help trace the spread of coronavirus when we see you back here tonight.